Hey, up. I don't know about you, but the older I get, the fewer things seem to amaze me. YouTube, in fact, the internet in general, is full of amazing things that, to someone of my age, are not that amazing. I've seen it all before. Things that are heralded as new and innovative, but you know, they were around 50 years ago. They just went out of fashion and then came back into fashion again. When I was at school, I had this metalwork teacher. I think his name was Mr. Air. And he was into this whole sort of scout movement, which was still popular back in the 1970s. The sort of survivalist movement, I think they call it wild camping now. It was one of those real good eggs. I remember in a free term where we could make whatever we liked in metalwork, I decided to make a 12 inch blade bowie knife on the forge and he was quite okay with it. In fact, he took quite an interest in the project and even sourced some of the extra materials that I needed for the handle. Looking back, it still amazes me now that he allowed me to do it. Can you imagine a kid getting away with that now? I remember one term he decided that we were all going to make a firebox, a little wood burning stove for camping, made out of sheet mild steel. I don't know where he got the design from, but it was like several different pieces of sheet steel that slotted together for use. Now, it was quite okay about people improvising and adapting the design. And I, of course, decided that I could make this firebox much better by adding extra air holes. You know, to make it more efficient, to burn more efficiently. Now, what I created was no good for cooking on. It was, in actual fact, a mini blast furnace. And my dad confiscated it after its first use because I set his shed on fire. And that was my last foray into fireboxes. It was gas stoves from then on. That is, until a few weeks ago, when my old friends from Wingman of the Road got in touch about their new camp kitchen. Now, firebox stoves seem to have had a bit of a resurgence in recent years, with one or two well-known brands charging pretty high prices for them. Wingman of the Road are a boyfriend, girlfriend or wife-husband team. They are very much of the same ilk of people like Ashley Watson. They are motorcycle travellers themselves. They know what works, they know what doesn't work. They also know that motorcycle camping is not the same as hiking. Your entire kit does not have to fall down to something the size of a pocket handkerchief only weighing as much as a paper clip. And the hard fact about most motorcycles is that they actually handle better when they've got some weight on them, so it really doesn't matter how much your kit weighs. With this in mind, wingman of the road tend to utilise traditional materials that are practical, durable and stylish. Okay, I suppose I'd better tell you at this point that this is not a paid promotion. My views in this review are my own. I don't receive any compensation from sales that might result from this video. And just to preempt the smart ass comment saying, yeah, but you got the kit for free, didn't you? If I didn't have the kit, the review would look like this. Right, let's get on. This wingman of the road kitchen comprises of two zip-up bags, one containing your cast iron platter compan with a handle, and that is set into a wooden tray, which also doubles up as a chopping board. Now, I'm no chef, but I've always been led to believe that cast iron is the choice of top chefs for pans because of the way it conducts heat. Your wingman of the road pan will need seasoning before use and there are plenty of resources on the internet to let you know how to do that. Now in the smaller zip up pouch is your firebox. It's primarily a folding design with one or two sort of slotting pieces to assemble it. And once you've familiarised yourself with the procedure, the whole thing just takes a few seconds. Your grate simply fits inside your ashtray, and the ashtray has two tabs at either end that locate into some holes on the sides of the firebox, and once installed, the whole thing becomes rigid. You then have a flat plate which acts as a guard to stop 
any embers from dropping out the front. The whole thing is made from polished stainless steel sheet. It's all very stable once it's been put together and it's completed with a grill or pan support that just slots onto the top. As well as a wood burning stove, this firebox can also be used as a miniature barbecue. To facilitate this, the ash tray that sits in the bottom can be moved up to a set of second holes, bringing it closer to the pan support on top, which then becomes your grill. I didn't get a chance to try that aspect of this out, but it's a nice touch that adds to its usability. Right, a quick disclaimer. Despite what we are led to believe, climate change does not cause wildfires and forest fires. In fact, these incidents very rarely occur spontaneously in nature. 99% of the time, they are caused by malicious or careless people. So whenever using an appliance like this in the outdoors, make sure that you have the means to extinguish it quickly should you need to do so, and never leave it unattended until you're finished with it and it has completely gone out. I have a wood burning stove in the house which we use in winter so I had a good supply of hardwood logs which I think were ash. Now each split log is about 8 inches long by 4 by 4 and I simply split these down with an axe so that I had a supply of pieces that were about one and a half inches by an inch by about 3 or 4 inches long. And that served as my main fuel source. Obviously, I split some smaller slivers off to act as kindling to get the fire going. The design of the stove is very efficient. It was a still day with very little breeze. And it still caught very easily, giving a good even spread and burn. Now, obviously, because I was filming this, there were several takes, so I used more wood up than I would normally. But I reckon one of those logs if you were camping would last you an entire day you know cook breakfast and provide you with a hot drink in the morning and it would cook your evening meal again with a hot drink so in that respect it is very efficient the open front design allows for a very controlled burn it doesn't all just go up at once very quickly so that you're constantly feeding wood into it to try and cook a meal and that's important because you need a good even temperature without having having to constantly run around looking for firewood to keep it going. One charge with four of these little blocks of wood would easily be enough to cook a meal. Obviously you don't have to use pre-prepared firewood. The whole point of these stoves is that you can just use whatever you find whilst you're out camping. Either way, burning wood is certainly more eco-friendly than burning gas. And I have noticed whilst bike camping in recent years that a lot of campsites hire out fire pits now, so they also have firewood available if you need it. So, firewood for a week based on current sort of log prices, you could, in my opinion, easily cook your meals for a fiver, which is round about the same price that a 500 gram gas canister is going to cost you. An important feature of this stove is that Wingman have raised the heat source up off the ground. And even when the fire is running full pelt, it's still cool to the touch at the bottom. This is important to comply with most open fire campsite rules. They don't like their grass scorching, although if they supply them, and most campsites do, I would also recommend putting some sort of fire support underneath it as well, just to make sure. Now, this wooden tray that comes supplied with the kit is essential for eating your meal, because you use your pan as you play, and obviously it's going to continue sizzling for some time after you've finished cooking. So the tray gives you the ability to be able to have your meal on your knee or whatever without burning holes in it. It also doubles up as a chopping board. It appears to be some sort of softwood, and if I had to guess, I would say that it's pine. I've no doubt for occasional use while camping, it's going to last quite a few years, but personally, I would like to have seen something a little bit denser. I'm nitpicking because this entire 
kit only costs about the same as a leading brand stove on its own. But while I was using it, I did think something like a compressed bamboo board might have been more appropriate, but that's just me. Now, this is where this whole kit actually started to amaze me. I recharged the fire, popped my pre-seasoned pan on top for a couple of minutes with a little bit of olive oil, and then started to add my ingredients. And it cooked the entire meal, including a prime British 28-day matured sirloin steak in under 10 minutes in fact some of my vegetables were a little bit overcooked i think i perhaps uh, left it too long before i put the steak on i honestly didn't expect this setup to be as efficient as it is i had it in my head i was going to be messing around with it for about half an hour before it would be ready and this is obviously a mixture of a well-designed stove with good quality fuel combined with the voodoo of cast iron cookware I honestly doubt I could have cooked it any better on gas and there's something strangely alluring about cooking on an open wood fire. The whole thing was just a very satisfying experience. The seasoned pan proved to be very non-stick and it cooked my steak to perfection, for me anyway. I like my steak well done. If I'm honest, I expected this whole experience to be a bit of a faff. I thought it was going to be very difficult to actually prepare a meal over bits of burning wood. But the Neanderthal in me, of which I'm told there's quite a lot, really enjoyed the whole experience of chopping wood and feeding a living, breathing fire producing a very tasty and perfectly cooked meal at the end of it. Now, I did do a little test because I knew people would ask. It will produce a rolling boil on a litre of cold water in just under 10 minutes. There is, of course, a little bit more clean-up work at the end of cooking, especially if you're travelling every day and you're needing to take this with you. You should not use detergents on your pan for cleaning. Cold water and a non-stick pan safe scrubber is all that's required and i actually found that the black on the stove itself cleans off pretty easy using the same method obviously they're not going to come back to as new condition once you've used them because you're exposing them to fire but it is only a little bit more hassle than using a gas stove all cooking times and cleanup is dependent on the quality of the fuel that you're using Oak and ash are the best types of fuel. If you are foraging for scraps of dead wood around where you're camping, it might take a little bit longer depending on the quality of what you can find. I don't think this kit is overpriced. In fact, I was pleasantly surprised by the price. And I suppose it depends on the individual what you want from your camping and cooking experience. Pack down size after use is reasonably small it will easily slot into a pannier and the supplied zip-up pouches are obviously going to keep dirt off your other equipment i even found that i could get them quite easily into that little barber bag that i've got i will of course leave a link to wingman of the roads website so you can have a look at these kits and that'll be in the video description down below. Once again, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video and my other videos, and in doing so, helping to support this channel. I do appreciate it, and I would also appreciate it if you would perhaps leave a like, and if you're not a subscriber, subscribe to this channel. Hit the notification bell, and that way you can be informed whenever I upload a new video. I am of course going to be back on Friday, so until then, please ride safely, and I'll see you soon.